In the last two videos, I've shown you the new Redux and ControlNet models. You can actually use both of them alongside the old Redux version. Want to see what happens when we mix them up? Let's jump into this workflow. Here's the photo I uploaded. I snapped it in a park with my phone. It's big, but it's not very sharp and it's missing fine details. The lighting is pretty flat too. So I decided to run this image through four different setups that combine a new ControlNet model with both versions of Redux. You see the two middle pictures? That's our original shot. The four in the corners are the outputs from each combo. They are all subtly different, but you don't need to zoom in to tell they look sharper and more detailed than the original. Let me walk you through the magic. This node group here loads every Redux model with its paired clip vision model. I've already talked about the Flex Redux model in a previous video, and I'll link to that in the description below. Its file name has 512 because it uses the new Ciclip2 encoder at 512 by 512 pixels. That's why I call its conditioning 512 conditioning. First up, we mix the new Redux model with the old one this way. If you've seen my previous video, you'll know that the image details generated by this Flex Redux model aren't the best. However, it does a great job of keeping the generated images close to the original in terms of composition. So I let it steer for the first 10% of the process with this node. The other 90% is handled by the old Redux model from Black Forest Lab, which adds more detail to the image. The image on the left is the result. The one on the right is the original. The composition is quite similar, but the lighting, contrast, and details are much improved. The second method is similar, but uses two advanced key samplers. I split the 28 steps into two chunks. The first part, which consists of eight steps, is handled by the first case sampler, conditioned by the new Flex Redux model. The remaining 20 steps are managed by the second case sampler, conditioned by the old Redux model. The rightmost image of these three is the final output. The main difference between this image and the leftmost one is that the contrast is a bit softer. The last two tricks bring ControlNet into the mix with the old Redux model. I covered this Union ControlNet setup in my last video. Links in the description. The ControlNet type I use here is a depth. The depth map is created by the first node group. Unlike the previous group, which used the Flex Redux model to maintain the original composition, this group relies on ControlNet for composition. To leave enough space for the Redux model to restore the original image's details, I set the end percent parameter to 0.5. The last method is similar to the second method in the previous group, while two advanced case samplers are used. ControlNet takes control for the first 8 steps, while the Redux model manages the remaining 20 steps. Now let's check out the final output images. The image on the left looks more similar to the original one. So now that you've seen all the combos, which one gives the best result? It's tough to pick just one. Mixing these models in different proportions can give you dozens of unique combinations. I actually generated a lot of images for comparison, but it's tough to show them all and explain the differences in just one video. If you are curious, download the workflow from the link below and try it yourself. The link to download it is in the description below. You might also wonder when you'd want to blend these models. In the next video, I'll show you one of these methods to seamlessly merge a person from a portrait into a new background. Stick around for that.